What's up everyone and thanks for joining me again. This week we're going to be talking about the gaps and islands problem with a slight variation from the way it's normally covered. You may have noticed that the scenery is a little different. I decided it's finally time to set up a more permanent location for my filming so I've relegated my camera and equipment down to the basement. Right now it's kind of a work in progress. I'm hoping to improve it gradually over time so if things change from week to week you'll know why. So the traditional gaps and islands problem looks a little bit like this. Imagine you have some playing cards down on a table and they are laid out in sequential order. You'll see we have ace, two, three, but then we have a missing four and five before we get to the six of hearts, and then we have another missing seven of hearts before we get to eight, nine, and 10. If we group the cards together that don't have any missing cards from their sequences, those are our islands, and the missing cards in between them are known as our gaps. And there's multiple different ways that you can solve a gaps and islands type problem in SQL Server. The technique I'm gonna show you today is using window functions, and the problem itself is a little bit more complicated than our card example. So Let's take a look at some test data first. So here's the table of test data that we're gonna be working with today. You'll notice that there's a start date and an end date column, so each row contains a range of dates. I've color-coded the three islands that we're gonna be searching for in this data above, and the key thing I want you to notice is that while the end date of some rows match the start date of other rows, for example, rows six and seven, the date ranges of other rows are either fully contained with other rows, like row two is contained within row one, while other rows overlap only on one boundary. So row four's end date doesn't overlap with any other rows, but its start date is before row three's end date. These kind of overlapping or fully enclosed date ranges make the gaps and islands problem a little bit more interesting because we're not only looking for the sequential order of our data, but also where our data is overlapping and sometimes our data is completely within another range. So the first thing we need to do is create a row number column, which is gonna create a sequence for our data based on the start and end date orders. We're also gonna add a previous end date column, which just uses the lag function to grab the previous row's end date and bring it up to our current row. In order to be able to use these two new fields easily, we're gonna put that whole query into a derived table. And then in our new select statement, we're gonna create two more columns. The first one is the island start indicator, which is simply a one or zero indicator that identifies when a row is the beginning of a new island. We don't really need this column in order to have our final solution work, but I think it's beneficial to see the output of it because then the next column that we're about to add makes a little bit more sense if we could see the data. And the next column we're gonna add is the island ID, which indicates which island group the current row belongs to. So earlier in our example of date ranges, we identified that there's gonna be three islands in our data. So we expect that island ID to increase from one to two to three. And this island ID field is just a sum of the island start indicator column, which is the same way you would do a running total using window functions, which I've covered in a video in the past. So if you're interested in checking that out, click the link below. And so for the final step of our query, we just need to once again, take our query, put it into a derived table, and then in our select, choose the min and max start and end dates, and then group that data on our island ID. And so the results that this query now returns are three rows indicating the date ranges of our three islands. This is a really cool query because it's able to take all those overlapping date ranges or those fully enclosed date ranges, figure out you know where the date ranges are continuous and when they're not, and then create these three islands of data for you. This is a really handy way of taking a lot of detailed data and being able to aggregate it so it's easier to look at if you wanna use it in something like a report or other logic. And that concludes today's episode. If you enjoyed what you learned, be sure to press the subscribe button below. By subscribing, you'll be notified of new videos, that way you don't miss a video so that you can continue learning and improving your SQL knowledge every single week. So thanks again for tuning in, I'll see you next time.